What's up everyone? This is SuperTal3 here. Welcome back to the channel. Now I'm sure a lot of you guys are being quarantined right now. At least I know I am. And maybe, unlike me, you don't have the best place to go outside to. So what is your solution to this terrible problem? You can't go outside. You can't do anything. Well, I mean, you could just stay inside, obviously. But your solution to exploring nature is Minecraft. Now, I don't know if you played Minecraft before, but if you have, this video is definitely going to be for you. Now, one of the more recent additions of the game is the Minecraft Windows 10 Edition, also now known as Bedrock Edition. This edition is kind of special because it's cross-compatible with the Xbox One Edition and the Minecraft Pocket Edition of the game. So this allows you to open your um, iPad or iPhone and play with someone who's on their Windows 10 machine or their Xbox One. Now today what I'm going to be doing is showing you how to set up a server on your local area network so that you and your family can play Minecraft together. This is really simple. First we're going to set up an Ubuntu server on maybe an old laptop or computer. That's what you can use. I'm going to be using my Proxmox server. So we're back here at the Proxmox server. We can log in now real quick. And as you can see, I already have a VM stood up right here. But for the sake of this video, we're going to re-stand up a new VM. So we're going to go ahead and click Create VM. If you're using Proxmox, this is what you'll be doing. Just put the name in. Select the ISO image. I'm going to be using Ubuntu Live Server 19.0. You can also use 1804, which is what is officially recommended for this use case, but we're just going to go ahead and use 1910 today. Use two cores as the re minimum recommended requirements is that you use two cores. I'll put two gigs of RAM. You should probably do more, um, but for the sake of this video, that's all we're going to be doing. There we go. And we'll click start VM. Move over to the console and this is going to be the installation process you're going to go through and with every Ubuntu installation um, I'm just going to guide you through this to kind of show you what options you might need to change or do differently um, for the sake of this Minecraft server depending on your use cases because depending on the use case you could be setting static IPs you could just use DHCP you could have it um, publicly available it just depends on what you want to do but definitely recommend a computer with at least two cores and probably two gigs of RAM preferably more if at all possible just this is an example server. I'm not actually going to be using this in real life, so there is that, and that's why it's a little bit weaker than I would normally have. In fact, my computer back there, my laptop back there, that is actually running my server that I'm actually playing on, has two cores and it's four gigs of RAM with a 60 gigabyte solid state drive in it. So here we are, we'll just select English, and we'll continue without updating. Click done. And as you can see, we got a um, DHCP address. Now, if you want to set it static, you just click right here on the little thing right here. You click enter and you go to edit IPv4, change it to manual, and you would put that all that information in. But for the case of this video, we're just going to leave it at automatic 10.2.192.168.2.30. Click done, done, done. Use an entire disk. Done, done, and continue. And I'll enter in our info. And there we go. Make sure to install the OpenSSH server. And that's pretty much all we're going to install right now. So now it's going to go ahead and install and when it's done I'll get back to you guys so that we can set up the Minecraft portion of this server. Alright everyone so we're done and now we're going to go ahead and log in. I'm going to be using SSH just because it looks better than using it through the terminal. You can do it either way. So that's why I clicked open SSH server in the install. Alright so we're going to type SSH username which is supertile3 at 192.168.2.30 and put the password in and there we go so as you can see there's 56 updates so um, right now pause the video and run sudo apt 
update and sudo apt upgrade. This will allow you to quickly update your system um, before you proceeding on the video. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and head over to github.com slash the remote slash Minecraft Bedrock server. This is a quick and easy installation script that sets everything up for you, makes it really easy to do. So as you can see, he has a few instructions. So we're going to do, let's clear the terminal and do wget https call slash s raw dot github user content dot com slash the remote slash minecraft bedrock server slash master slash setup minecraft dot sh and we got it now we'll do chmod plus x setup minecraft dot sh now what chmod does is it sets the permissions so when it has a plus that means everything that's on there add x to it and what x stands for means executable in linux you have r w and x and r stands for read w for write and x for executable um, so if you do something like this you do l in some versions it will work uh, do l slash la and it lists permissions so as you can see right here set up minecraft.sh doesn't have the executable permission on it and we need that because we need to run that script so that's where chmod plus x set up minecraft and then we do this again and you can see that it has x so it can run by any user so do dot slash setup and run our put in our password so that we can install the needed packages and does this really fast and installs screen unzip sudo net tools and wget etc so basically just if they're not installed if the dependencies that it needs are not installed it goes ahead and installs those really quickly now we'll put in our server name so this will be super tau 3 dash mc1 and confirm and then we'll do 19132 put in our ports um, now you I'm just using the default ports um, but I would put other ports in if I was running more than one server on a device that because you can in fact do that as you'll see in just a minute well so we'll set it to start up automatically back up at 4 a.m. daily and now it's started and as you can see we got everything going so now we'll do minecraft Let it start up. Let's go over to servers, add server, supertal3 mc1 at 192.168.2.30 and click play. And as you can see, it's generating the world right there. Um, so while it says locating server, um, it's really just generating the world at the moment. So the server's making the world. So that way when you spawn in, you can actually see things that it's not just like black. Now it's done. So ta-da, here we are. It's actually pretty cool. Um, and one thing that I just noticed, they have like slabs of snow now. And like snow stacks up, which is really good. Um, that's a feature that I think they should have, you know, they needed to add for a while. Um, but also see the texture on this grass when you mine it up. Turns normal. Anyway, so we spawned in a kind of a um, barren mountain area. But as you can see, everything works just fine. The Minecraft loads good. I'm trying to come to the high spot. And there we go. So you can see, you know, we can see for a distance, distance about eight chunks. Now, if you want to see more than that, and you, maybe your server is more powerful, you're going to have to edit some things. Now, firstly, go back and connect. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to OP yourself, make yourself operator. So you do OP, Subtile 3, and they have to be on while you're doing that. So, see no target match selector just because I haven't fully joined yet. We'll see that um, right here. Now, let's do this. OP Super Tile 3. There we go. We've opt Super Tile 3. Now, we can do this. Um, 
control C so I terminated it now we'll just do now to restart the server we'll do cd dot slash minecraft be cd dot slash super tile 3 and then we'll do dot slash start dot sh boom backs it up starts it over again and now you can see if you want to view it and do stuff in it you just do screen dash r super tile 3 dash mc1 but right now we don't really want to do that instead we want to list everything and do vim and server dot properties which is a json um, not a json file that's a different file um, and you can see it says the properties for this so we can go in and do actually we'll just leave it at survival um, allow cheats set that to true max players online mode whitelist true you can edit the ports here, the view distance. I'll set this to 64. Level name, level seed, default player permission level. All this kind of good stuff that you really will want to set. Now, to exit in Vim, you just press escape, WQ, bang. There we go. So that right quits and forces it to quit. Um, to start typing, you would just press I to go into insert mode. So now we can do dot slash restart dot sh. Actually, first let's do vim whitelist dot json. There's nobody in our whitelist at the moment. Now do dot slash restart dot sh. Server is not currently running. So that means we just want to do dot slash start dot sh. Backs up server and starts it right now. So now if we try and join back into the server. You're not invited to play on the server because we are not in the whitelist. Server. How to HTML. We'll do slash to search and we'll just do whitelist. Alright, so see, here's the example whitelist file. Right here. This is what you need. Control shift C copy, Q to exit. Now do vim whitelist.json. Press I and then press control shift V. There we go. We are now inside of here. And we'll do name. Tile 3, ignore player limit, true. So this basically means if the server was full, do you want to let them on anyways? And I'm the owner of the server, so I want to set that to true. I'll add another player, and you can specify the XUID, but, here I'll add. but I don't know that right now, so I'm not going to. It should auto supply that. There we go. So now we'll do dot slash restart dot sh. So you restart notifications to the server. It's going to restart it, and I'm going to be able to join the server now. And you will ask too. Um, you don't have to set a whitelist, especially if it's just on your local network. That way, everybody on your network can play. But if you're going to have a public server, then I highly recommend setting a whitelist because that means that only certain people that you want to be able to play on it can play on it. Otherwise, somebody might somehow discover your server and be like I'm gonna destroy everything this dude has built and if you built a bunch that could turn out very very badly so now let's um, go over to Minecraft and join as you can see we're able to join now because we are whitelisted also cheats are enabled and I'm opt so that means I can do something like slash game mode creative slash game mode spectator slash game mode adventure or even back to survival, you know, but I'm already in survival, so I don't really need to do that. So right now it's generating the world again, and we do slash game mode creative. Okay. Game mode has been set to creative, and so now I can fly around, be a cheater. Now obviously, um, for ethics reasons, I don't really recommend that if you have a policy on your world that's where you're basically telling everybody you cannot go in 
creative. Um, we're going to stick to only getting resources in survival. I highly recommend that you stick to that policy too and that you don't just cheat because you're the owner of the server. Um, although this is just an example of how you can use commands like this to change things. But anyway, um, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This video, I showed you how to set up an Ubuntu operating system and load the Minecraft server on there so that way you can guys can play either on your Windows 10 PC, your um, iPhone or Android device, um, tablets work too, or your Xbox One computer. Now, um, if you want it to be public facing, you're going to have to do some stuff like purchase static IP addresses, etc. But for now, um, this is great for your local area network. So thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, please hit that subscribe button and like the video. Um, thank you for watching. This is SuperTal3 signing out.